Welcome to Ladybird Readers. If you have enjoyed looking and listening to my books, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Disney's Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, a Ladybird book. This edition is the 1995 version. Winnie the Pooh lived in a little house deep in the Hundred Acre Wood. Pooh was very fond of honey. He could lick out a honey pot until there was nothing left except a little bit of stickiness around the rim. Pooh was so greedy that he could eat a whole pot of honey and still feel hungry. One morning, just as Pooh was deciding how to spend his day, he heard his clock chime. Now, said Pooh, this means it's time for me to do something. Ooh, if only I could remember what that something was. Pooh began to think very hard. Think, 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 he said to himself, tapping his head. Then he suddenly remembered. Of course, it's time for my stoutness exercises. Pooh stood in front of his mirror. He hummed a tune so that the exercises wouldn't seem such hard work. I go up, down, touch the ground, which puts me in the mood. Up, down, touch the ground, in the mood for lots of food. Pooh stretched his short arms up in the air and then he went bent down to touch his toes. Even though Pooh tried very hard, he couldn't quite reach them. Suddenly, Pooh heard a loud ripping sound. He turned round and saw that one of his seams had burst open. Oh, fluff and stuff, said Pooh crossly. He pulled the thread and tied it in a tight knot. There, that's better. Now, where was I? Pooh thought for a moment. Oh, yes, time for honey. Pooh looked in his cupboard and there was only one honey pot left with hardly any honey in it. Oh, bother, said Pooh. Only the sticky parts left. He put his head inside the pot to lick out the last little bits. Suddenly, Pooh stood up. He had heard a buzzing noise. The only reason I know of making a buzzing noise, he said to himself, is because you're a bee! And the only reason for being a bee, Pooh went on, is to make honey. And the only reason for making honey is so I can eat it. Pooh opened his front door and followed the bee outside. He watched it fly up into the sky and then disappear into a hole in a tree. <gasps> that must be a honey tree, thought Pooh, and decided to climb it. As Pooh climbed the honeybee, he hummed a little tune to himself. hum de dum de dum because my tummy's very rumbly. It's time for something sweet to eat. hum de dum de dum de dum Pooh climbed higher and higher and higher. He was so busy climbing and humming that he didn't notice how thin the branches were. All of a sudden, there was a loud Crack! The branch Pooh was sitting on snapped. Down, down, down he fell, bouncing and tumbling until... Bump! He landed in a prickly gorse bush. Poor old Pooh. He crawled out of the bush and picked the prickles from his fur. Pooh was now a very cross, very hungry little bear. He sat down to think of another way to get the honey from the honey tree. He thought and he thought, and the first person he thought of was Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin lived in another part of the Hundred Acre Wood. Pooh knew that Christopher Robin always tried to help his friends with their problems, so he decided to go and see him. 
who found Christopher Robin helping Eeyore. Poor Eeyore's tail had come off again. Very gently, Christopher Robin tapped Eeyore's tail back in place with his hammer. Owl, Kanga and Roo watched. Eeyore waved his tail to and fro. It's working, cried. Oh no. It's working, cried Roo happily. Well, so it is, said Eeyore. I know it's not much of a tail, but I am rather attached to it. Good morning, said Pooh. Good morning, Pooh, his friends replied. What are you looking for, Pooh Bear? asked Christopher Robin. Well, I wonder, said Pooh, can I borrow your blue balloon? What do you want a blue balloon for? asked Christopher Robin. Pooh put his paw to his mouth and said in a whisper, Honey! <gasps> but, but you don't get honey from a balloon, said Christopher Robin. Pooh smiled. I do, he said. Then Pooh found a muddy puddle. He rolled it over and over until he was black all over. Isn't this a clever disguise, he said to Christopher Robin. But what are you supposed to be, Pooh? Christopher Robin asked. A little black rain cloud, of course, said Pooh. The blue balloon will look like part of the sky and the bees will think I'm just a rain cloud drifting by. Silly old bear, said Christopher Robin. But he gave Pooh his balloon anyway. Pooh took the balloon and almost at once a gust of wind lifted him up into the air. As he drifted up towards the top of the tree, he started to sing a little song. I'm a little black rain cloud floating under the honey tree. I'm a little black rain cloud, don't pay any attention to me. Soon Pooh was very close to where the honey was. Some of the bees started buzzing angrily around him. Christopher Robin, called Pooh, I, I think the bees suspect something. Perhaps they think you're after their honey, said Christopher Robin. Mm, maybe, said Pooh, you can never tell with bees. And he tried singing his little rain cloud song again. But the more Pooh sang, the louder the bees buzzed. Pooh stretched out his paw and reached into the hole in the tree. He scooped out some delicious honey. The bees began to buzz very angrily indeed. Uh, Christopher Robin, Pooh called. You could help me trick the bees. Put up your umbrella and say, Oh my, it looks like rain. Christopher Robin opened his big umbrella. He walked up and down saying, Oh my, it looks like rain. Oh my, it looks like rain. But the bees buzzed just as loudly as before and all of a sudden they swarmed out of the tree straight towards Pooh and his balloon. Pooh didn't like the look of all those angry bees flying towards him. Christopher Robin, he called. I've decided they are the wrong sort of bees. As Pooh tried to scramble away, the knot on the end of his balloon came undone. The air rushed out of the balloon and Pooh found himself tumbling towards the ground. Christopher Robin, I think I'm coming down now, he shouted. Pooh came whizzing down through the branches and landed safely in Christopher Robin's arms. But the bees were still very angry with Pooh. Luckily, Christopher Robin had an idea. He held Pooh very tightly and he began to run away. The angry bees chased after them. Christopher Robin ran and ran until he reached a muddy puddle. He and Pooh jumped in and hid under Christopher Robin's umbrella. The bees buzzed angrily around looking for Christopher Robin and Pooh, but they couldn't see them. The umbrella had made a very good hiding place. At last the bees flew back to their tree. Christopher Robin and Pooh crept out from underneath the umbrella. Now they look just like two little black rain clouds. Oh, 
Thank you, Christopher Robin, said Pooh. He was very glad that the bees had gone away. Oh, you silly old bear, laughed Christopher Robin and gave Pooh a big hug. I know, said Christopher Robin. Let's have some tea and honey. <laughs> what a good idea, said Pooh. Christopher Robin gave Pooh a full pot of honey and Pooh ate and ate until his tummy was full. Pooh was a very happy, very sticky little bear. He had had a terrible adventure with the bees, but the day had ended wonderfully after all.